I'm the host of the London E Meetup. We host these uh, meetups monthly. And this is probably our A for ninth meetup. Um, I'm the organizer of the group as well, and also we have Matteo as the uh, organizer of the group as well. So if you go there online, you'll see him. Right? If you want to uh, put suggestions across, you can do that message to me or to him. We'll be more than glad to, to talk to you on ways that we can improve our group. Right? So I'm happy to see new faces here. Yeah, fantastic stuff. We're still in the infancy of the group here, but you can see a lot of potential. Right, so if you um, would be so kind to, if you have your, your phone there, check in, be here at the meetup, take some photos, right, let's get the word out, let's get more people in, let's uh, fill three rooms of these, this size here with people talking about E, exchanging good information, networking, right, and advancing um, PHP as a whole. To be here tonight, the venue, the beer, <coughs> and the snacks were kindly provided by Digital Linux. I'm the technical director for Digital Linux, and this is Digital Linux. We have around 50 people here. Carla is our front end, our, our lead front end developer, right? and she is keen to learn a bit more about E as well tonight. Um, we have a website here, digitallinux.co.uk. Um, our main client is Mercedes Benz. I've been actually showing some of the work here on the previous meetups. So the latest one was a, um, a form, a test drive, a brochure download form that we have on the Mercedes uh, Benz UK site. Uh, and actually, if you go on the e forum now, the e powered applications, there's now an entry for that Mercedes Benz application there as well. So tonight, what we're going to go through is a uh, it's been around for a number of years now, and now there's a major release coming up, 2.0. And naturally, we want to be ready for when that happens. It hasn't happened yet, we're still using the stable 1.14 for the stick, is that right? 1.14. So we're going to go through a few aspects of this new framework, or the new version of the framework. Right? And actually, a lot of things have improved, some things have changed, but at this moment in time, we are still developing. Uh, Kiang and the team are developing the application or the, the new version of the framework now to be able to release it further down the line this year. Uh, so I'm going to go through a few aspects here. I think I have maybe around 15 slides about specific things that have changed. We're not going to actually go into a lot of coding because this is about you understanding the main aspects that, that, have, that uh, have changed. And then naturally we can discuss. We have uh, uh, a lot of people here that uh, have been working with E for quite some time. Brule is one example here. Uh, Matteo as well, Diego, we have been working with this. So we can discuss things in detail uh, after the presentation. But even during the presentation, if you have something to add, let's add to the conversation. Let's exchange ideas. Uh, jump in, chip in. Right? Let's. Uh, Let's exchange information here and advance as a whole. So I'm going to talk about this, and then Spurio will come in later on and talk about an add-on that he has created. He didn't actually tell me the, the name of it. Work in progress. Yes, work in progress, <laughs> indeed. Uh, he didn't actually tell me the name for it. That's why I just put an add-on. Yeah. Right? But uh, I can see there that it's a... Uh, I'll leave it as a surprise. I'll leave it as a surprise. <laughs> So the idea with the E, E started uh, in um, 2008, is that right? 7, eight. I started using uh, 7 slide slash 8, uh, I started using it in 2009, and I've been using it ever since. I think it's a, an interesting framework for its simplicity, speed, and so forth. But um, as I told uh, the, the crowd there at the PHP London last week, this is naturally not about comparing E with other um, frameworks. There are specific reasons why one framework is better than the other for specific tasks. This one works for me, it works for some of you guys there, and hopefully it will work for all of you in one way or another. Right? So 
after version 1.0, um, that was actually all of uh, the versions until 1.14, and now we're getting ready for the 2.0. So still in alpha, this means that uh, it's not yet ready for production, so if you're actually doing something for a client, actually don't use it yet, just yet. But no, there's nothing stopping you from trying out and experimenting with it. Right. Um, PHP 5.4.0, uh, which means that you can define your arrays with square brackets, right? uh, and that's only supported on uh, 5.4.0 upwards. But when it comes to time for you to uh, rewrite or port your applications to 2.0, you have to understand that it's incompatible with uh, 1.0. Right? So, Whenever the right time comes, you have to adapt some things. There are a few cool things that are happening on 2.0 as well, which is you can install via Composer. Ah, brilliant stuff. If you haven't used Composer, um, What's you Composer? should. Yeah. It's a yeah. way to manage packages okay. in, uh, in PHP. And this is one of the coolest things, I think, because one of the difficulties we had with E in the past is that the, the, the framework is very flexible, but being so flexible, there's no starting point uh, on an advanced level or on a basic level. You only have the ability to create one application, an example application, and from there you have to find your way on your own. This is a very cool thing. Now, with 2.0, you're going to have a basic and an advanced application template which means that the basics is actually basic, one layer, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Whereas the advanced, you're going to have back-end, front-end, shared mod models, and so forth. So this is a very cool thing that's coming up with 2.0. So what's going to change all of this? A right. bunch of stuff. Naturally, I don't want to... Um, Keep you guys here till 3 a.m. So I'm just going to briefly cover the ones on the left for this session. All right? So I'll just talk about the, the main aspects of uh, change on each and every one of these here. Um, you can actually chip in. Uh, as well, if you've been using some of these here, you can actually contribute. You're more than, uh, more than happy for you to do that. And then perhaps in the next session, we can go through the ones on the right here. And I count on your presence next time for us to go through that as well. So just a show of hands here, um, who's been using E on a regular basis? Right, yeah, so we, yeah, we have an interesting <laughs> split. <laughs> Almost split, 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 split yeah. So for, for some of you who have not yet used E or just trying it out or experimenting with and understanding what's out there, Right, some of this might be a bit alien, but uh, I'm more than happy then to later on explain more about the framework, how it can help you. Uh, so just don't be uh, deterred by this, by some of the aspects here that you don't quite understand. Because this is naturally the changes that are happening from 1.1.4 or from, from 1.0 branch to the 2.0 branch. And one of the major changes here is namespaces. If you remember, every class you had to ensure that it was unique, the name was unique. Right? And people used to do that with uh, prefixes. So your class would be called C controller. Actually, the, the, the framework would be called C controller. You could be, yours could be called D controller or F controller, whatever. You just had to make it unique. Now you have the ability of uh, using namespaces. And namespaces, Purely and simply are the locations of the, uh, the files there. So you will specify things in this way. This is a major thing for the framework. Secondly, components and objects. See component here, something um, that I'm sure you've used if you've been coding it, has now been split into object and component. And this is just to simplify things. If you are extending from a very simplistic, or you're aiming for a simplistic uh, or a simpler data structure, then you go for the object. If not, then you go for the component itself. And the component will give you then fancier stuff, will give you events, will give you behaviors, etc., etc. 
but that gives you a choice now. A uniform way of configuring objects. So you can see that it extends an object now with the namespace. So we could have another object placed elsewhere and they wouldn't conflict, which is quite cool. Right, so there's a way for you to um, configure your objects in this way. So you define uh, your constructor like that with the config, and then there will be initialization in this way. And you can see an example of this being applied here. Right, so this is how you can create an object now um, with a specific configuration. So your property one and property two are already the configuration. So this has changed from 1.0. When you were working with events, you had to define those methods. But uh, you no longer need to do that. You just uh, define your event, your event name and your event handler, and yeah, you're ready to go. As simple as that. This is a quite cool one, path alias. You can use your, your aliases there on your application. Now you need to um, use the at sign before that. So differentiate between your alias and URL and also folder structures. So you can see an example there. So at E means the installation directory. You could naturally define all sorts of other things. And one example would be, uh, I'm using Zen. Yes, you can use Zen here as well. But you can import other classes from Zen. You can use all sorts. You could create at Zen to uh, pointing to where your Zen installation is. And then you can import things from there and naturally uh, use uh, the best that Zen can offer you. Uh, and it's actually closely related to class namespaces, uh, but you would define that in this way. We're all coding in MVC, uh, I hope. If not, then <laughs> I would expect you to. <laughs> but um, in version 1.0, we didn't have the view class itself. So in this uh, ver version 2.0, now we do have the view class. And this is, uh, I put it in red because this is one of the most important changes. When you are in the view, when dealing with your view, then you would refer to this as being the controller. Right? This is no longer true because now this refers to the view class. Right? So this is something that actually, when you're porting your 1.0 application to 2.0, you have to amend that. Another cool thing, Smarty and Tweak, uh, template engines added. I've used Smarty, I've used Smarty in the past, and it was quite cool. Uh, Twig, I don't know much about, but um, I think it's interesting that we have options, we have opportunities, we have alternatives there. Yeah. But conversely, now, browser support has been removed. So if you're using that, now you have to port it to one of the supported ones. On the models, we have, um, so in the past you would define the name of the form statically, right? So this time now you have a form name method that will return uh, the name for that form which is related to the model. We have, we have a few different methods now to aid in uh, data population, which is load and load multiple. Uh, you remember the, uh, um, was, was it like the batch attribution of properties, or yeah. there is a different name for that? More about the bridge, of course, of course, of course, of Yeah, so now we have this sort of uh, possibility. And we have scenarios. They will define which field needs to be validated. So for, for you that don't get used E, on the model you can define the validation for each field. Right? That was done slightly differently than this. Now you have to define a scenario, and within that scenario, you define which fields need validation and which type of validation they need. And in doing that, whatever you define on the scenarios, those are the ones that are going to be defined as safe. And there are some, um, the, the, the 
the definition of uh, safe attributes here, perhaps it's beyond the, the context, but uh, for some specific functionality, you have to define those properties as being safe. Now this happens automatically by the scenario method. The controllers, that's a part of the NBC. We have lots of controllers on any sort of application that we code in deep. Um, in the past, if you, on your controller, you would call render and then there will be an output of data at that moment in time. Now, it, it, it doesn't happen that way. What's going to happen is that, that those two functions, those two methods will return the contest to your variable and then you have to treat it. Uh, and then echo it. So this means that render will be variable receives the result of render or render partial and then actually you do whatever you want with it, you print it or you perhaps include it in a, um, an email body or etc. do what you need to do with it. But this is an important uh, change that's coming up. When you develop in here, you're always thinking about making components, you're thinking about making things modular, thinking about separating things, and part of this process is creating widgets. So widgets, usually we call these widgets um, components that render information in a specific way. Uh, now, they are being simplified. In the past, you had to pass the strings and a lot of information through begin widget and end widget, now you instantiate them and use the begin and widget methods. So I appreciate that these things here will be better explained with examples. But again, I didn't want to, to take uh, all of your time with a lot of nitty gritty details because you well educated people naturally can then get to very nitty gritty details later on at your own time. This is something that I've always thought that was very cool in here. Uh, themes and there is a possibility of you to create different themes, different skins, etc. etc. Uh, on version 1.0 and now uh, and 1.1.4. 1 and back then we used the C theme manager, uh, but now that is gone. You no longer need to use it, you no longer need to resort to it. But we do have an introduction of path maps, which means that. Uh, you just have, you create the, uh, the reference on the left with the destination on your right. Uh, so whenever you call this particular view here, it will be translated into that view here because it will just replace the contents of that. This means that you can just create this map and from anywhere on your application you can just resource to that view and use a specific theme. So it simplifies things greatly here. And that's the thing that I just mentioned. Uh, it can be rendered outside of the context of a control source anywhere. Now you can re re refer to a specific theme. A few more things here that we have. Um, internationalization. This has been something that we've been using. Uh, Oh, sorry, well, I'm reading the next one here. It's the console <laughs> application. Console application. Sometimes what you need to do is to invoke your application from the command line using a cron script uh, to process queues, to send emails, but that's not going to be invoked by a user going to a website itself, going to your application. But you're going to do it on the shell. So for that, you create console applications. Um, console applications were being dealt with in a different way uh, on 1.1.4. Now they're being, being brought in line with the uh, web controllers, which is a welcome change. Um, so it, uh, it means that they inherit from the same base class, and still it works in a similar way to 1.1.4. It's just the classes and the methods have been reorganized to facilitate the developer's life. Now, internationalization. Um, I'm sure you've created your applications with uh, various languages. These days, we 
software developers, we want to target one market, then the rich countries and the all sorts of uh, interesting other markets that we want to target. Therefore, mm -hmm. internationalization is something important. Um, the things that have changed from 1.0 to 2.0 is that for the, the formatters, the data number formatter are being uh, discontinued in favor of the Pickle International PHP model. Right, so I, I don't have much information about the Pickle International PHP model, but there has to be a good reason for this change. <laughs> right, and in the past, you, um, you would work on the basis of your application having a source language and a destination, destination language. So you would, you would um, localize and internationalize your application in English, but then you could at runtime change that language to Portuguese or to French or to Italian, etc. Et uh, you're doing the same thing on version 2.0, but now you have to refer to a component of the application called I18N. So on your config file there, there will be an I18N component if you want to change things. And this is actually the last slide from my part here, um, the action filters. I'm sure you've used access control in the past. This is used to determine who has access to what. Right? And there was a specific asset access control method uh, in version 1, but now it's being moved to behaviors. So you have to implement it in this particular way. Um, and as you can see, the, the array is being um, defined here with the uh, new notation, more similar to JavaScript, right? And um, so this is yet another change that we um, uh, need to take into consideration when going from 1.0 to 2.0. This is not an exhaustive list. Naturally, there are a few of the bits and bobs that we will go through next session, assets, uh, all sorts of interesting things that uh, will be described in the next um, session next month. Uh, but still, the framework is going under, but it's still under development. There are lots of fixes going uh, through. We don't expect major changes at this stage. Right? So we don't expect these things here to change drastically and dramatically. But be advised that there could be a change here and there. So maybe something here that we mentioned might change slightly. But I'm sure that you will, at the right time and at the right moment, consult the documentation to find out more about these changes. Right, so I'm happy to discuss any of these things here later on, over a few beers and a few crisps that are still left. But uh, at the moment, I um, thank you for your attention. I'll pass it over to Zbulia Marian. He will talk about his uh, surprise E2 uh, add-on 